In this video, you're going to learn the basics of 3D printing for producing early prototypes of your product's enclosure and any other custom plastic parts. We're going to discuss four different 3D printing technologies, including FDM, SLS, SLA, and jetting. We'll look at their advantages, disadvantages, and some use cases so that you can figure out which of these technologies is most appropriate for your specific prototype requirements. The most common 3D printing technology by far is fused deposition modeling, or just FDM for short. An FDM printer works by pushing a filament through the hot end of the printer. This prints a single line of plastic at a time. The product is made by layering line upon line of plastic. If it's necessary, the printer will add supporting materials, which are parts of plastic to support any upper layers that are hovering or hanging above a void. The main advantage to using FDM printing technology is that it's by far the most common 3D printing technology, especially for at-home printers. This is mostly because the printers are very cheap and accessible. It's also a rather simple technology, which can be used with a minimum amount of skill, yet it can yield some pretty impressive results. A huge variety of 3D printers are available, some with varying technology like multi-head printing, which allows you to print several materials on the same printer. FDM printers also have access to a wide variety of filaments, which means that a single printer can create parts with very different plastic characteristics. FDM printed parts are also, as a whole, very tough. Depending on the density of the part, they can be very durable compared to other technologies. One of the disadvantages of FDM printing is the lack of accuracy. Most FDM printers use a 0.4 millimeter print head, which means that 0.4 millimeters is as accurate as you can get on any of your parts. This means that doing mechanical systems that interlock or that work together can be tricky. For example, snap fits are a common case when a lack of accuracy can be a real problem. This also means that the surface appearance isn't always optimal compared to other technologies. Another problem is that an FDM printed part has different strength characteristics depending on the direction of the plastic layers. Since they are made up of overlapping layers, parts are considerably more fragile along these layers, so it's much easier for the parts to break in a horizontal direction than it is in a vertical direction. If the part has some thin sections, that may be problematic. In some cases, parts that are less than a millimeter thick can be easily broken by hand. The last major disadvantage is the heat behavior of FDM printing. All of the materials used have to be easy to fuse through the print head, which means they need to have a rather low heat resistance. Materials with the lowest heat resistance can have issues at temperatures as low as 70 degrees Celsius or 158 degrees Fahrenheit. The best materials such as ASA, nylon, and so on can go up to 120 degrees Celsius or 248 degrees Fahrenheit, but rarely can they go higher than that. This means that FDM printed parts are not appropriate for use in specifically hot environments. With some of the more fragile materials, even leaving them in the sun during a heat wave can be enough to start warping and deforming them. Keep in mind that the temperature inside of a car on a sunny day can climb very quickly. In fact, for my own product that I brought to market years ago, I had sent an FDM printed prototype to an executive at a national retailer for their review after requesting it. But since it, I shipped it during the hot summer, it partially melted in route and the warpage made the, part, the product non-functional. In addition to the low heat resistance, the main disadvantages of FDM printing are that it doesn't produce a very high quality appearance and it's not extremely accurate, but it's cheap and accessible and offers a lot of possibilities. If you wanna make cheap prototypes quickly and easily, or if you have simple designs that aren't too detailed, then FDM can definitely be a technology for you. It's by far the cheapest and easiest to master of all the available 3D printing technologies. At the opposite end of the quality price scale compared to FDM is what's called Selective Laser Centering, or SLS for short. This technology prints a layer of powder by using a laser to solidify select parts of this powder layer. Then a new layer of powder is added on top, it's lasered again, and the process is repeated. Your part is then constructed layer by layer. The difference between SLS and FDM printing is that instead of printing a single line at a time, you're printing an entire layer at a time. 
and you're melting the material directly onto the print bed instead of pushing it onto the print bed. This process means that the design is even more flexible than FDM because you don't need support materials. All of the uncentered powder acts like a support and is then removed and reused later on. SLS prints are more durable in all directions and they are less likely to break than FDM printed parts. While the appearance of the parts isn't glossy or smooth in any way, it results in a homogeneous, slightly sandy feeling surface that's the same everywhere on the part with no visible layers and with really good accuracy. All of this means that SLS printed parts look good and are structurally solid. Some specialized SLS printers can even print metal by using beds of tiny metal particles and melting them with a strong laser. So the advantages of SLS over FDM printing are greater flexibility, better quality, and increased toughness. In terms of disadvantages, SLS is very slow. It takes two to three times longer to print the same part using SLS than it would with FDM. Also, both the equipment and the material is far costlier than for FDM printing. Expect to spend five to 10 times more using SLS compared to the lower end of FDM printing. SLS is usually not as appropriate as FDM is for early prototyping due to the slower printing speed and the higher price. But if you're going for small runs of high quality parts where toughness and appearance are important, but the quantity is not too large, then SLS can definitely be appropriate. With SLS, your parts will be more expensive, but they will look better and be stronger than with FDM printed parts. More common than SLS, but less common than FDM, so kind of right in the middle, is a resin printing process called stereolithography, or just SLA for short. With SLA, you have a bed of liquid resin, and underneath it, there's a transparent plate. Then a laser is shined on specific parts of the bed in order to solidify the resin. SLA printers are quite accessible, not quite as much as FDM, but they can still be used by hobbyists, so they're spread across the market quite a bit. SLA printers are also pretty cheap. Compared to FDM, they have an excellent appearance and a high level of detail can be achieved. These are generally the best quality prints that you're going to get. They can produce small details with great accuracy. The main problem with SLA prints is that they are extremely fragile. Most SLA prints can be easily snapped by hand if you're not careful, so this severely limits their use in any type of mechanical context. Also, these parts require a lot of post-processing because there are a lot of supports that have to be printed as a part comes out of the liquid so that the liquid can keep spreading and holding to different bits of the printed part. This means that there's a lot of human work involved in removing these supports. Then the cured resin needs several rounds of different treatments in order to be fully functional. This means you don't just need a 3D printer, but you need several curing devices afterwards, which raises the price of this technology. The best use case for resin printing is for decorative parts. Since they are beautiful with a nice glossy finish using a variety of possible materials and appearances, you can get an excellent result from SLA, but you definitely cannot use SLA printed parts in any application where they will see mechanical stresses. The next technology I'm going to cover is less common than the other methods already discussed, and it's called material jetting. It works essentially like your usual paper printer, but instead it prints several layers on top of each other. You basically have a two-part print head. The first part jets a layer of material onto the part layer by layer. After that, a tiny laser emitter will solidify the material as the machine is running. Think of it as SLA on steroids. It has all of the same advantages as SLA, but it's faster. In fact, it's one of the fastest printing technologies available. But it also has all of the disadvantages of SLA, while being less common and even more expensive than SLA. The use cases are the same as for SLA, being decorative and demonstration parts, but you can afford to make much larger runs since it's not as manpower intensive as SLA and it works considerably faster. You can make mid to large size runs with this jetting technology and producing between 100 to 1000 parts is totally practical. If you found this video helpful, then definitely check out this video here where I go into all the details of designing for injection molding technology.